Okay, this is the uh, 2016 Outbound 46 at the uh, 2016 Annapolis Boat Show. This is hole number 59, a uh, project we started back in 1998, uh, designed by Carl Schumacher. Carl was a race boat designer out in San Francisco that uh, just a master designer, uh, designed the express line of racer cruisers, the lightweight 48, he designed the little Larion 28 uh, date sailor that you see on the East Coast quite a bit. The goal was just a very conservative cruising boat for a couple uh, that they could take anywhere they want to go. Uh, she's solid glass hull, uh, the Venicel core deck, number 65 is being built now. The boats have cruised all over the world, been building the boat for 18 years and uh, still have a very strong following, doing a couple boats every year. Uh, this boat has the hard dodger option that we came up with last year. Uh, very, very popular. All the boats that we've uh, built since we, since we introduced it have taken the hard dodger. It's uh, very, very solid, very streamlined. The, 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 the glass is actual laminated safety glass, so it's very safe offshore. And uh, you can see an abundance of handrails all the way around the Dodger. Uh, in the top of the Dodger, there's two Lumar hatches to provide ventilation down into the cockpit, uh, making everything very tight and secure and watertight. The, um, once again, you can see handrails all up and down the deck, large derades. Uh, there's four large derades, and those derades have closures inside the cabin in the overhead, so you can close them off from inside the boat if you needed to. Uh, the lifelines on the boat are 30 inches high, unlike most boats that are just 24. So once again, she's very, very secure offshore. And uh, you can see the Genoa track there, uh, pushed as far inboard as possible to give a very tight sheeting angle. Carl was very much a race boat designer, and he uh, put as much performance into a, a relatively uh, moderate displacement cruising boat with a lot of tanks and a lot of storage as you possibly could. So you'll find the boat to be very, very close-winded. And for a cruising boat of this, of this, uh, of this uh, quality, you'll see she's a very, very, uh, very good sailing boat. The, uh, you can see the large uh, inch and a quarter tubing on the stern pulpit and on the stanchions also. And we brought the stern pulpit all the way forward to the front of the cockpit so that as you leave the cockpit, you've got a secure handhold all the way, uh, all the way forward. Um, uh, we see it on a lot of boats now, but back in 1999 when we did it, we were one of the first uh, adjustable leads for the general cars. You can see easy access to that. The, uh, looking into the cockpit here, you'll you'll notice that the, the primary winches are pushed to the back, back of the cockpit so that the helmsman, because you're going to be sailing probably with just two people, the helmsman can drive the boat and trim the sails uh, from, from that position. The boat is uh, rigged as a, as a Solent rig or a double, double head stay rig. It's got a large mainsail with uh, full batten main and uh, two reefs, six battens, and then the two furlers, twin furlers up forward. The inner furler is the Solent sail. That is about 100% jib. That becomes your working sail that you'll use 90% of the time, upwind and, um, and then downwind in any kind of breeze, you'll use the Solent sail also. Very easy, easily managed rig. The outer head stay is a 140% Genoa, high cut Genoa. It's uh, medium weight, so you can use that upwind in light air, or you can use it off, wind, off the wind in, uh, in heavier breeze. The, uh, you'll see two large uh, bow rollers up forward, uh, very, very efficient anchoring system. Um, the air draft of the boat, the height of the rig above the waterline is 63 and a half feet, so it is intercoastal friendly. Uh, the draft on the standard boat is six and a half feet, and several of the boats have gone through the intercoastal. We also offer a shoal draft version, which is a five and a half foot draft for people that are, that are living in uh, shallower areas like the Chesapeake. The standard mainsail on the boat is a full battened um, uh, conventional sail with lazy jacks. We use Antel low friction slides so it raises and lowers very easily and Spectra um, lazy jacks which provide uh, minimal chafe on the sail when the lazy jacks are deployed. The lazy jacks can then be pulled forward to the mast so you can put the sail cover on easily. This particular owner opted to go with the Dutchman system. Uh, you can see that there. We have also done leisure furl in boom furling on several of the boats and also in mast furling. Okay, we've moved up onto the, onto the foredeck here. You can see at the very front of the house here, there's a watertight bulkhead 
uh, that uh, separates the inside of the cabin from the sail locker and the chain locker. And then right on that watertight bulkhead, there's a large Wishard folding pad eye just, uh, just after the hatch there. And some people will opt to rig a storm jib stay on that pad eye that goes up to the second spreaders. And then up moving forward of that hatch, there's the uh, foredeck and the anchoring system. You can see that there's about a two, two to three inch fiberglass bulwark worked into the tooling so that if you have to work the foredeck up here, you've got some support. The, uh, we, we, what we did is we tapered that bulwark to nothing back aft so that any water that comes aboard the boat offshore doesn't get carried all the way back to the cockpit. But up here on the foredeck, you've got a nice spot to really secure yourself in. Again, you can see the inch and a quarter uh, pulpits. Uh, 30 inches high, unlike uh, 24, like most other boats. Um, dual dual bow roller there. Uh, this boat he opted to go with a Bruce anchor. Our standard anchor is the 33 pound or 33 kilogram Rockna, uh, which has kind of become the standard anchor these days. It's a it, we've been very fortunate that bow roller has pretty much fit every anchor we've tried on it, um, and it, they end up basically being self-launching. It's one of the features of the boat we don't really talk talk a lot about, but it's really sweet. Uh, you can almost you can lower that anchor with just a flip of your foot pretty easily. And then at the back, right after the uh, the bow roller, there you see a scupper. Uh, great little feature, basically catches 99% of the water and the mud that comes aboard the boat with the anchor chain, and so you're not chasing mud down the deck every time you bring the anchor up. Um, to the starboard side of the roller there, there's a deck plate. That's for an extra road uh, going into the split chain locker, but it also allows a spot for the power cord to go into the forward shore power connector. We're one of the only boats, I think, that offer a shore power connector both at the bow and the stern, so depending on how you're docked, uh, you can run a cord into the boat easily. Uh, that, that, that access there allows the cord to come down inside into the locker where there's a pow uh, power, uh, power connector. The windlass is a Lumar V4, uh, plenty of power for a boat of this size, and we, we offer a, uh, uh, the boat comes standard with a handheld remote that's kept in the locker. The foot switches are possible, but they have a tendency to fail because they're in a very wet environment, so we found that the, uh, the handheld uh, control is uh, just as, as uh, reliable, and you can move around the deck with it a little bit easier. Okay, again, this is the uh, hatch into the forward locker. It's uh, recessed down, so the foredeck's easy to work. Um, the locker is large enough for your asymmetrical chute, fenders, dock lines, you know, all the stuff you need offshore cruising, um, separated from the, from the cabin itself, so there's no reason to bring wet things into the cabin. Uh, the white box there at the very bottom is the bow thruster. So as you can see, it takes up very little space. And uh, it's an option, but it's, uh, it's one that most boats go ahead and get these days. Um, the uh, shelves along the side for storage, there's, there's uh, spots to hang dock lines and things like that that are all set up. The locker drains into the main bilge, unlike uh, some boats put a bilge pump in a locker like this, uh, but we don't rely on a bilge pump up here that could fail. We have a, a watertight uh, tube that goes down into the main, bil main bilge, so if this ever was to fill with water, that it will drain to the main bilge and then be pumped out with the, with the uh, four bilge pumps that are back aft. Okay, we're now inside the locker looking forward into the chain locker. The locker is carefully designed. Uh, it's very deep and narrow, split in two. Uh, the idea being that you can stack 250 feet of chain in there without it piling up and hitting the bottom of your windlass like it does on so many other boats. You can be on deck and pull in the chain and not have to worry about coming down here to knock the chain over every, uh, every 25 feet. It drains over the, overboard, directly overboard through the side of the hull so that any of the wet, wet water that comes aboard, the muddy water that comes aboard, will go straight out back to sea, not into the boat. Okay, up on the foredeck, still looking aft now, you can get a vision of how wide the side decks are, easy to move back and forth, for, you know, fore and aft on the boat. Again, you can see the high, uh, high lifelines, inch and a quarter stanchions, and handrails everywhere. You can see the dir large durades, four large durades, two of them here by the mast, with the granny bars on each side, the mast pulpits, we call them, uh, to give you a little more security if you have to work the mast offshore. Incorporated into the mast pulpit is a step there about halfway up so that you can reach up to the mast. Although a lot, a lot of time was taken on the, mast, on the stack height of the main, uh, our main has an extra batten and fewer slides so that somebody short, like about 5'8", can reach the actual reach the headboard and put the main halyard on the main uh, when needed. You don't have to climb up, climb up the mast to put the main halyard on. 
The uh, chain plates are sam two stainless steel chain plates sandwiched on each side of the main bulkhead uh, for very easy access and very easy to inspect. Um, very conventional. Uh, the, the whole boat is basically built in a very conventional fashion. Uh, the whole deck joint is 5200 and uh, bolted through about every four inches. Um, just very, very conventional, tr tried and true uh, construction techniques. On the stanchion here you can see the uh, fuel tank vents, uh, one on each side, and uh, we've raised them up as high as possible to just eliminate any possibility of, of water getting into the tanks. Okay, we're back aft now looking uh, forward from the, from the helm station. Uh, very conventional, safe, offshore cockpit. Uh, you can obviously see the hard dodger provides a lot of protection. There's a nice breakwater there at the, at, the, at the front of the dodger there to keep water out of the cockpit. Uh, you can see electronics mounted nicely right on the dodger combing at the companionway. So you've got uh, good visibility for the electronics. That's the new E7 there in the center that's a chart plotter and radar at the companionway. On the starboard side there, that's an electric winch on most of the boats. Uh, that winch there pretty much runs the whole boat. The main halyard, the main sheet, and the reef lines, and the pole topping lift all come back, basically come back to that, to that winch, um, and that's electric. So very, very easy boat for a couple to handle. It really takes very little muscle. Um, uh, so it's a, it's a good, safe boat for a, for a couple offshore. The, um, you can see the cockpit is relatively deep and narrow by today's standards for offshore sailing. You know, you can hunker in down here and be safe in any kind of conditions. It's all uh, the ergonomically designed. It's very comfortable seat backs. Uh, you can see the little angle there on the seat back that grabs, the, grabs your back. And then the, the wide combings. Uh, they have a nice little angle to them also, so if you're motor sailing along with a little bit of angle, those kind of go flat and give you a great place to sit outboard and uh, with some great visibility. The, um, the back aft, you'll see the primary winches uh, are tucked at the back of the cockpit near the wheel so that the helmsman can trim the sails at the same time without having to reach away from the, reach away from the, from the wheel. Um, the nav pod there, uh, is pretty standard on most of the boats. Once again, he's got a second plotter back here for piloting and his bow thruster control and his autopilot control. And then uh, there's room there for a stereo control. And the back end of the uh, starboard combing, we've got the engine panel and easy access to the, to the helm. And then just forward of the engine panel, we've got a, a breaker panel there for the, uh, the navigation lights and the washdown pump. So you don't need to run down below every time you want to uh, turn on the, uh, the navigation lights. Aft of the engine panel there, you see a, a Lumar button for the electric primary winch that this, op this owner opted for as, as an option. Okay, we're now looking aft in the back end of the cockpit here. Uh, a big part of the design was the bishop seat that you see right behind the helm there. Uh, that's uh, set right there so you can lean against that if you're on a long passage offshore. You can also step or sit up on top of that uh, if you're motoring along, um, you know, on watch. Uh, on the starboard side of the, of the uh, helm there is the, the large propane locker. Fits two large bottles, uh, which is more than enough to cover all your cruising needs and barbecues and everything. You'll see a bilge pump handle right there on the starboard side above the speaker. The idea being that if you ever had to drive the boat and pump the bilge at the same time, it, you could do it. Um, it should, should never happen, but just in case. You'll also see there's four uh, large Wishard folding pad eyes standard in the cockpit for hooking, uh, hooking a harness onto when you're offshore. Um, once again, you can see the primary is pushed back aft and easy access to the helm. Uh, there's a hydraulic backstay adjuster on the starboard side. Uh, you tighten that up to give, the, uh, give a lot more range to your sails by being able to get a maximum tension on the rig. You, know, you can flatten the jibs and, uh, and get a lot more range out of uh, uh, just, the, just the two sails. The um, uh, speakers, uh, uh, we install those at the factory. The, uh, on the port side of the wheel, there's a large lazarette. Uh, that drops all the way down. There's plenty of room in there for fenders and dock lines and uh, any of your gear that you need back aft here. Okay, we're looking down at the deck behind the helm. You can see the large uh, plate here, which is where the emergency tiller just drops into. Um, very easy to just uh, pop the plate off and drop the tiller in. There's no, no, no screws or anything that are required. And then after that plate is the uh, one of the more unique features of the outbound 46 from the very beginning was the life, dedicated life raft box. 
this box here where you can fit a, a six-man valise life raft. Um, very easy. Uh, you can uh, right where you need to put it if you ever had to deploy it. It's right here at the transom, and you can put that. Easy to bring it in and out when you're uh, not on the boat. You can put that down below and, and lock it up. Another very unique feature of the Outbound 46 is the workshop area here accessible from the cockpit and also from the cabin. Um, we've got a workbench there, uh, drawers for tools and spare parts, very easy to get to. The space just forward of the workbench there, that's sized for a washer dryer. Uh, and it's also on the boats that don't get the washer dryer, we use it as like a hanging locker for your foul weather gear and things like that, but you could always add the washer dryer later. It's the, become, kind of become known as the boat with the workshop, uh, also referred to as the garage. Uh, looking aft over here, you can see a door back access to the steering gear and place to store engine oil and other spare parts. Okay, now we're in the, uh, we're in the aft end of the lazarette area, the garage or the workshop. And you can see the door uh, into the into the aft uh, head there, so easy access into this space. And then inboard there on the bulkhead behind the engine, you can see the uh, easy access to the twin Raycor fuel filters. The the boat comes standard with one Raycor, and uh, this owner opted to go for a dual. Underneath the Raycor filters is easy access to the potable water pump. It's also kind of placed there in a place so you can hear it, so that uh, if it was running without you. So it wouldn't be running without you knowing about it. And then above the, the fuel filters, you can um, see the uh, frigid boat refrigeration systems. All very easy to get to. And then uh, also have good, good visibility of the actual shaft with a dripless, dripless seal, which is standard. Um, so you can you know, keep, a, keep an eye on the shaft uh, going out the hole. And then aft of all this, uh, this owner has, uh, he opted for no generator. He's put a Yeti cooler here, but uh, this is the, the common space for a generator, either AC or DC. Uh, we can install uh, pretty much whatever generator you decide you wanted to take. Okay, that completes the deck tour of the Outbound 46, and now we'll go ahead and shoot a second video to show you the fine features of the interior.